The Green Power Ranger, a very popular design and a very popular character, has finally been brought back into the Power Ranger comics, and as we discovered, it's an old friend of the Rangers, Matthew Cook. But how did he get here? Today we're going to discover his journey to becoming a government-controlled Power Ranger, and how he's going to save the entire day because he is currently locked behind an impenetrable wall that it has all of Angel Grove contained within it. This is Comic Story, and I create audio dramas of your favorite comic books, leaving out enough that there is still something for you to collect, be it extra plot, context, or artwork. All alterations are for copyright purposes, and please don't forget to check out our long-standing sponsors. G Fuel, where you can use the code COMICS to get 10% off of your order, or Shortboxed, a great app that will allow you to start your graded comic book collection today. Click the link down below to enter a contest to win one. Today we're going to be covering Power Rangers Mighty Morphin Volume 2. Though Match Reveal to the entire world took some time in planning, it actually begins all the way back to Zed's Terror Zords destroying the city. When the Power Rangers were losing the fight and were going to finally be defeated, Gray Sterling, the individual in charge of Promethea, a government-run facility that had restored the green power crystal, decided to call in Matt Cook and offer him the chance of a lifetime. You see, Matthew Cook was someone who would normally run from a fight, but when she saw that he would actually throw himself headfirst into danger when things were looking bad, she brought him to Promethea, and she explained that she would have liked to have given him the general rundown before things got to this point, but they don't really have that kind of time. All he needs to know is that they've been monitoring him and that he has to undergo the transformation into the Green Power Ranger. There was very little time between Matt becoming the Green Power Ranger and going in to face Lord Zed one-on-one -on -one in a battle. He had never really been in an actual fight, but his athletic ability on the football field allowed him to hold his own against the menacing threat that is Lord Zed. Knowing that his inexperience could get him killed, Matt noticed the green chaos crystal that Lord Zed was using to power the Terror Zords, and he struck it, thwarting Zed's plan for a hostile takeover. Upon being brought back to the Promethea, he took a deep breath, staring at his helmet, thinking, how did I get here? And Grace told him that she did the exact same thing on her first mission, and no, he's never going to get used to it. Just so that he knows, even though he was pulled out of the fight, the Power Rangers took care of the Terror Zords when they were depowered from the Power Crystal. He comments that it was nice to play Hero for a few moments. But Grace asks if that's all he wanted. Because she'll admit, he was not their first choice. But Billy thinks that he has all the qualities that it could take to become a ranger. When Rita kidnapped him, he didn't wait to be rescued. He did something about it himself. So welcome aboard, Matt. You're now officially a Power Ranger whether you like it or not. Since then, Matt began to undergo heavy training to get him where he needed to be physically while keeping everything a secret, only to be known by Billy Grace and her team. Though Matt's training was not going as quickly as Grace would have liked, they didn't have the time to waste on getting Matt acquainted with the Dragon Zord. To try and help out, Billy made improvements to the Dragon Dagger to make it feel a bit better in combat, but also explained that it has another function. The Dagger is a harmonic device to summon and control his very own Zord. All he had to do was place the Dagger on the faceplate and he'll hear musical notes in his head, and all he has to do is play them. Matt began to test it. And after playing a few notes, the Dragon Zord is summoned, and Grace tells him that he needs to get used to controlling it, as there will be times that he must fight against things much larger than him. Now, we go back to the current day, the current plight, as Matt is helping the Rangers face any number of baddies that attack the city. But this day, in this particular fight, something changed. To defeat the mighty putty creation, Matt was going to link up with the White Tiger Zord when they were suddenly stopped and repelled. See... They saw something happening in the sky, so Matt rushed out of his Zord to help the people below when the ranger seemingly ran from the fight. Matt was fighting a group of Chaos Putties when suddenly he was teleported by Grace Sterling and brought back to Promethea. He argues why was he brought back, but Grace tells him that what he saw in the sky was actually the formation of a shield that has now covered all of Angel Grove and is currently impenetrable. They just need to brace themselves and figure things out before they do anything out in the field again. Matt yells that he will not just hide away. The people already look terrified that the rangers disappeared and right now they need someone that they can trust. Grace tells him that she is already planning a citywide broadcast, requesting everyone conserve food and stay indoors, but Matt says that he has a better idea. 
They need someone that they can trust, and they'll listen to him. Despite not liking the idea, Grace went along with it. And as the cameras were set, Matt broadcasted himself to the people of Angel Grove, letting them know that they are not alone, that his name is Matthew Cook, and that he will be there to save them. Meanwhile, just outside of the barrier, Tommy and the others are fighting against more of the Chaos Putties, clearing a path for the military to try and bring down the shield. But even with a clear shot directly at the barrier, the military's attacks are proving ineffective, only agitating the Chaos Putties so that they attack with bigger numbers. Everyone gets to work taking out the putties, allowing the military to escape. But as they're teleported out, Adam asks if anyone else is just getting tired of this. It's been weeks. Back at the command center, General Nolan of the military informs Zordon that they are on day 23 with zero results. The Joint Chiefs are discussing all the options, including nuclear. Zordon tells him, Please inform the President that although we appreciate his assistance, we are sworn to protect Angel Grove from any and all attacks. Nolan says that he'll pass it along, but he can say that the President doesn't respond well to threats especially now that he knows that they are likely a bunch of high schoolers. The attack won't commence until all of his men are clear, and he can stretch the evac to 36 hours. But if they want to avoid a showdown, I suggest you find a way to bring down that shield, Zordon. Comms are closed, and Adam asks if he missed something, or did the general just say that they were about to blow up Angel Grove? Aisha says that she can't speak for everyone, but she isn't just going to let them blow up her family. Even if she has to jet into the sky and knock the plane off course, Zordon tells her that he promises that he will not let it come to that. Now, if Billy and Candace can assist him with their latest experiment, he thinks that it might be best for everyone to get some much needed rest. As everyone leaves, Billy asks if they're working on something. Zordon tells him no. So with the help of Alpha 5, Billy and Candace get to work, looking through the scans to see if there's anything that they can do. Billy asks if she infiltrates other worlds often. Candace tells them that actually it's called supervising. Before they reveal themselves to a new planet, the Altar send guardians down to investigate and examine each culture in secret. But for them to reveal themselves, they require a species to be significantly more advanced. But humanity has seen more than most. Zordon then asks when was the last time that she was on Altar. And Candace says that it was just last year. The sister had her first child. Zordon asks if they still celebrate the Festival of Life. Candace tells him, of course, her parents take them there every year. They went for dancing and singing. But she and her sister really only cared about the frozen Evox sticks. Zordon bursts out laughing. I felt the same way. She asks if he still has family on Altar. Zordon sighs. No, sadly. Everyone I've known has been gone for a very long time. He says that that is not true. He fought alongside Zardis, right? Zardis has been made Supreme Guardian for generations now. How is that possible? She explains that Altarians live far longer than they used to, that they've made significant advancements in the last 10,000 years. He'd be amazed. Altar is very much a paradise. But before she could tell him about it, Alpha 5 runs in. Ay ay ay, Zordon! I'm detecting a broadcast from just within the shield barrier. We may have found a way inside. Everyone gathers together and Alpha 5 begins to play a message showing Grace actually stating that they have found a way to disrupt the shield, but only for a brief moment so that they can get in. She really hopes that they care about getting this and may the power protect them. Tommy asks if they can trust it because Grace may have been compromised. Zed might be leading them into a trap. Zordon says considering her recent deceptions, he too is wary, but they have no choice. Billy will stay and help find a way to take down the shield. The rest of the rangers will venture inside. So, a short time later, just outside of the dome, the rangers arrive at Grace's coordinates, but before the opening can begin, they're attacked by the Chaos Putties. Tommy asks, how is it this a trap? And Candace tells him not to worry. They've got a Guardian of Eltar on their side. After transforming into her gear, she slams down her dual swords, creating a shockwave that rips through dozens of putties. At that moment, there's a distortion in the shield, and Tommy tells everyone that this is it. Everyone inside! They all cross over, and everything is... No burning buildings, no fires, just a large obelisk in the middle of the city, seemingly being the structure that is keeping the barrier active. Everyone looks around. Adam is the one that comments that even though it feels normal, it's very wrong. A voice calls out. Is it that, or is it finally very right? Goldar, with an army of putties, says to the rangers, Welcome to our perfect world! 
and beside him is Matt, the Green Ranger. In the name of Lord Zed, surrender and nobody gets hurt. The Rangers brace themselves for an attack, but as Matt clashes to Tommy, he tells him secretly, I know how this looks, I'm sorry. If you simply lay down your weapons and come along quietly. But Tommy asks him, Surrender? Ha, never gonna happen. Goldar makes his move on Tommy next, but Kimberly jumps in, firing arrows, telling Tommy, Remember and stick to the plan. Go. Reluctantly, Tommy pulls back with Candace and Aisha, and Candace blocks them from following and disappearing into the city. As the putty begin to surround the remaining three, Rocky says, You know, I don't remember this being a part of the plan. And Adam agrees with Kim telling him, Just follow my lead. You want us to come quietly? I'm calling your bluff. We surrender. Goldar takes a cheap shot, hitting Adam in the back of the head, but Adam tells him to stop. He knows the rules. He might not be scared of him, but he should be scared of what Zed will do if he messes up the plan. Goldar lowers his sword. Huh. Very well. Come along, Rangers. It's time we showed you what we've done with your place. Elsewhere, a man is robbing a woman for her purse, but before he could get far, one of Zed's monsters jumps on him. Stop! Tisk tisk, the tragedy of youth. Here is your purse and my assurance the thief will be reprimanded. Candace, Tommy, and Aisha stare. Did somebody hit my head really hard or did that monster do something good? The three of them wander and they begin to see what Goldar was telling them. The putty are helping construct new buildings. Babu is helping plant trees and everyone just seems happy. After seeing more and more of Zed's paradise, Aisha says that she hates to say it, but what if this is all legit? Maybe before we destroy it all, we should figure out Zed's motive. Maybe Zed is a better hero than a villain. Tommy stops her telling her, I don't buy it. Something is up. This is Lord Zed we're talking about. It wouldn't be the first time that he put an entire population under some form of mind control or ancient hex or something. If we don't do something, everything from here to the ocean is going to be radioactive. The goal was to knock the shield down. I might know how. Once they reach Promethea, Rocky looks around asking, So, this is what selling out looks like? Matt, you do realize that this gold-plated monkey has tried to kill all of us multiple times, right? Matt tells him that it's complicated. And another voice chimes in. You do what you have to do to not become at dinner, especially when your allies skip town and leave you to fend off the wolves. Grace walks down the steps. I'm sorry for the subterfuge. Someone had to save Angel Grove. Kim asks, is this your answer? Bowing down to Lord Zed? You didn't save the city, you sacrificed it. She snaps. You may not like it, but Zed has given us more than Zordon ever has. As she looks, she only sees half of the rangers and asks where are the rest. With Goldar growling, they escaped. They're somewhere in the city, but... Matt stops him, stating that it doesn't take a genius to figure out their next move. He knows exactly where they're going. Back in the city, Aisha and Candace begin to sneak up onto the white tiger sword. But before they could slip in undetected, Squat spots them, stating, It would seem that Squat, trap setter extraordinaire, finally got one right! Seize them! As the two begin to hold off the putties, Aisha says that the mice are after the cheese, it's time to wake up the kitty cat. Tommy sneaks into his Zord. I'm on my way, but the minute that we power this up, we gotta get back. Tommy transforms, climbing in, but as he goes to activate the systems, Saba says the shield is blocking the solar energy needed for a proper restart. Outside, Candace tells him not to worry. She can give the White Tiger Zord all the juice that it needs, and she slams her sword into the Zord, releasing her solar energy within it. Suddenly, the White Tiger Zord comes to life, with Tommy declaring that she did it. As he begins to pilot his way towards the city, a large putty-shaped like building latches on, with Zed asking, Did you really think that I'd leave the shield completely unguarded? How stupid do you think I am? A second putty forms, joining the first one, beating Tommy down. I wanted you here for this very moment. This is my city now. There's only one way you get it back. Back in the Promethea, Kimmy and the others are watching as the putties overpower Tommy. And she turns to Matt, asking him, We understand why Grace would do this, but you? Stop this, please, Matt. Matt tells her that he's sorry, he... But Kimberly punches him. You're a coward! At that moment, there's a flash of light, and Zed steps down. I have arrived, and I see you've gotten my message. What do you think of my little utopia? Kimberly yells that this isn't a utopia. This is a prison! And Zed laughs. <laughs> I didn't create the shield to keep the people in. I did it to free them from the ranger's tyranny. All of this was a gift from me. Humanity has been drawn into a conflict that it has nothing to do with. 
They're soldiers in a war that they did not start. My deal with Miss Sterling is simple. I will depart today and never step foot on Earth again in exchange for one thing. Zordon of Eltar. Today I offer peace, and it's up to you if you take it. Back outside, Tommy continues to get beaten down with Saba telling him that the structural integrity of the Tiger Zord is at 17%. They have to do something before the putties break through. But at that moment, one of the putty are shot from behind as Aisha races in with her Zord, asking, Do I have timing, or do I have timing? Don't, don't answer that. The other rangers watch as Matt says that they need to do something, and Grace tells them that they are. They're being smart and standing here, saving their lives and seeing what happens. But while Matt and Grace quietly talk, Zed presents his offer again, and Adam says that he might actually be sold. Kimberly says that it'd be nice if Zed left Earth. The three of them immediately begin to attack, and Adam says, You've got to be pretty stupid to think that we would ever trust you. And Kimberly scoffs. It doesn't seem to be a problem for some people. Zed deflects, unleashing his own attacks. I could destroy this building with a snap of my fingers, yet I allow you to live. Do you know why? Suddenly, another voice chimes in. You sure brag a lot for a guy whose insides are on the outside. Candace teleports in, smacking Zed from behind, and Kimberly says that she appreciates the assist. But I thought you were helping Tommy. She jumps to his side, telling her that there isn't much a girl can do with a one-legged Thunder Megazord. Goldar tells the putties to take the new one's weapon and kill her! But while this is unfolding, Grace tells Matt that it's time. You know what to do. And Matt sighs. Thank you. Over in the command center, Alpha 5 sees the, an emergency transmission, and as he plays it, Matt says that he's sorry to reach out like this, but Tommy and Aisha are in trouble. The Dragon Zord's power cells are dropping, and it's not listening to the stupid flute commands. Billy tells him to relax a minute. It's fine. Engage the auxiliary stabilizers at the startup, okay? It's one of the modifications I made. Watch the input levels, and you'll be fine, Matt. Matt tells him thanks. And please know, I would never let anything bad happen to them, I swear it. Billy tells him, oh, I know. May the power protect you. As the transmission ends, there is silence. And as Billy turns back, Zordon says, You stole the dragon power coin. You helped bring back the Green Ranger, and you've been assisting Grace behind my back this whole time? Do you care to explain? When Tommy lost his powers, I got scared, really scared. I couldn't stop thinking about what would happen to our planet if we lost all of our powers. And when it was clear that you couldn't fix it, but you wouldn't even try every possible option, I had to do something, Zordon. You did. You gave away one of the most powerful weapons. You have proven yourself able to solve any problem you put your mind to. Well, I have one for you. After months of lies, deception, and betrayal, how are the Rangers and I ever supposed to trust you with anything ever again? Because if you can solve that, you truly are a genius, Billy. Back in Angel Grove, Aisha manages to pull one of the large putties away to give Tommy room to breathe, but suddenly, the Dragon Zord flies in, with Matt asking, How about we destroy these things and go get some ice cream? What do you guys say? Aisha asks, Since when did you switch sides back? Matt tells her, I never left. I'm just a good actor. But trust me, I was pulling my punches. And just so that I can prove it to you, I'm gonna stop now. As the Dragon Zord gets close, Matt spins it around, sending its tail, drilling through one of the larger putties, destroying it almost instantly. Matt stops. One down, one to go. Think you guys could finish the last one? Tommy says that he just needs five seconds of freedom. And Aisha opens fire. I got you covered. As the putty is deflecting and turning back, Tommy grabs the White Tiger Thunderbolt and loads it, pulling the trigger and firing a blast straight through the putty, destroying it. She asks why he didn't do that earlier. Tommy tells her he was trying to, but hold on a second. Where's Matt going? Matt jumps onto the Dragon Zord's shoulder, telling him that he's going where he's supposed to be. Billy set him up with something just for the occasion. Seriously, what kind of dragon doesn't breathe fire? He plays a few notes on the dagger, and the Dragon Zord's mouth opens wide, firing its own energy beam, piercing the shield and causing it to shatter. As the sun begins to shine in, Tommy asks, What was all that even about? Playing along with Zed just so you can swoop in and take the credit? Matt tells him, You can think what you like, but I was simply following orders, just like you. 
Back inside of the Promethea, Kimberly and the others fend off against the putties. With Goldar telling Grace to unleash her troops, and she tells him, okay. We'll finish this. Go! Grace's security charge in, and instead of attacking the rangers, they begin to attack the putties. Grace then pulls out a blaster, pointing it at Goldar, asking, This how you imagined it would end? Goldar begins to teleport away. I never liked you. Meanwhile, Candace and Zord continue their one-on-one -on -one battle. But as Candace attacks, Zord asks, Do you think that I've lost? I never wanted Zordon or the city. I simply needed to show the people what a world without rangers looked like. And now that they've seen it, they'll devour you all for me. Zed releases one final attack, trapping Candace. In fact, I have everything that I came for, including her. Come along, Guardian of Eltar. It is time that I enlightened you on the true nature of the universe. And just as Zed predicted, everything returns to normal and social media is a buzz of the happenings of the city. They all begin to ask the same question. Everyone asks, how was it with the shield up? And everyone says it actually wasn't bad. It was nice. They didn't have to worry about anything those three weeks inside. As society questions the need of the Power Rangers, the Rangers try to go back to some semblance of a normal life, but while they return to their families, Billy is on his own, trying to figure out what to do next. And that concludes Volume 2 of Power Rangers Mighty Morphin. Now, stick with the story, because next we're going to jump back to the Omega Rangers, see what's going on with Draken, then come back over here to continue doing the Volume 3 of Mighty Morphin. Story's starting to get big, sprawling, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. And if you want to know how we got here, all the Power Rangers videos are linked down below. I'll see you guys next time, right here at Comic Story.